So the question is, why do I keep sinning so much? You're getting frustrated, you're getting upset, you're becoming angry at yourself. You're saying, man, I repent, I keep sinning, I read the Bible, I keep sinning, I pray, I keep sinning, I go to church, I keep sinning, I put on praise and worship, I keep sinning. Let me let you know something. All those things didn't catch God by surprise. He already knew all of them. Pay attention to what happens in Peter's life. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 34. Jesus knows everything about you. And he's not going to leave you like that. Stop asking yourself that question, why do I keep sinning so much? And focus on Jesus. Because failures are going to happen. No one starts their Christian life flawless with zero mess ups. No one. Look what happens to the life of Peter. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 34. Why doesn't anyone start their life flawless with your messes? Because we're learning. We're being taught the new life. You're learning the new life. That's what you're doing. You're learning the new life. You don't know how to live this new life. I am still learning this new life. I didn't know how to live this new life. I'm learning through the word of God. We're learning how to live this new life. So there's going to be failures. Why do I keep sinning so much? Oh, why do I keep sinning so much? And the devil got you. Ha ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep sinning. Oh, you're no good for nothing. Oh, you're just a failure. Oh, you're just a hypocrite. Oh, you're just in a repetitive cycle. Oh, you're never going to change. No, that is not true. You've already changed and God is going to continue to change you. And what you struggle with today, you're not going to continue to struggle with later on in the future. God is doing something in your life. Look what happens in the life of Peter. Peter has to learn this hard lesson. He's already been walking with Jesus three years. He thinks he's more holier than what he really is. He thinks that he doesn't have the sinful nature anymore. And look what happens. Jesus tells him this, verse 31 and 34. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. People used to throw wheat in the air and the seeds used to fall on the ground and the, the chaff or the impurities used to get blown away by the wind. In other words, it's a separation. Sifting is a separation between the true and the hypocrite. That's what sifting is, the true and the false. The true comes down and the false gets blown away. Do you know what a failure is? Do you know what a sin is? It's the truth being revealed. That's what a sin is. That's what a failure is. And you might say the truth being revealed. Yes, it's the truth being revealed. It's showing you that you're a sinner who needs Jesus. It's showing you that you still have the sinful nature and you need what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. And not only is it showing you those things, but it's also bringing out humbleness. Because it should make you be humble and acknowledge the Lord even greater in your life. Like, Lord, I need you. I was becoming prideful. I was becoming self-righteous. Then, what? A sin. What? A failure. And then you're like, whoa, I'm not as righteous as I thought. I'm not as perfect as I thought. I'm not as flawless as I, as I thought. I'm not as strong as I thought. What is a sin? It's the truth coming out. That's the, the, the sin. It's the truth coming out. It's showing you that you have the sinful nature. And it's showing you that you're a sinner that needs Jesus. And it's showing you that you need to be humble and depend on him. Because if we were to depend on ourselves, we would not be saved. If we were to depend on our own righteous works, we'd all be doomed. Sifting. It's a separation. And Jesus is letting Peter know, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. And look what Jesus says. And this is what he's saying to your life too. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And let me tell you something about the prayers of Jesus. They always got answered by God. And I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, meaning repented, Jesus already knows about the sins, and Jesus already knows about our repentance. <laughs> he already knows these things. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and death. You know what Peter means by that? I ain't going to fail you. I'm never going to fail you. I'm never going to turn my back on you. I'm ready to go into prison and death with you, Jesus. And Jesus said to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. Do you know that denying Jesus is a, a great sin? The Bible says, if you deny me amongst men, I will deny you amongst the angels in heaven and amongst my father. I will say, I don't know you. That was a great sin. Peter denied Jesus in front of people and he said, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. He did it out of fear. Do you know that the Bible says the cowards will not enter the kingdom of heaven? Cowards will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So he denied Jesus, a great sin, and he did it out of being a coward. That's another great sin. There's no more hope for him. Peter, you should have known better, Peter. You've been walking with Jesus, the Son of God, three years, Peter. You've been eating where he eats, sleeping where he sleeps. Your, your master and your teacher, Peter, was Jesus, the Son of God. You have no excuses, Peter. Isn't that what the devil tells you? You're a hypocrite. You have no excuses. You know better. You know better. You've been saved all these years. You know the Bible. You might even teach the Bible. Look at you. You know better. You share the Word of God. You teach the Word of God. You might even preach the Word of God. You should know better. 
And look at you. Look how you're still failing. There's no more hope for you. No. Jesus said, I have prayed for you, that your faith not fail you, and that when you turn, you strengthen your brothers. What is a sin? It's the truth coming out. That we're in a fallen state, that we have a sinful nature, that we need to depend on him for our righteousness, that we need to lean on him and be humble and trust him. And what is it also? When we turn, the Bible says, we will strengthen other people. In other words, through your experience and through your brokenness and through your restoration and through your being lifted up again, not only are you going to be strengthened, but you're going to strengthen a lot more people. Do you think you're the only Christian that goes through what you're going through? No. You're not the only Christian that goes through what you're going through. But the devil wants you to make you focus on, I keep sinning against the Lord. I keep failing him. When God is going to lift you up and forgive you and sanctify you and wash you of all your sins. The devil doesn't want you to see the blessing that God's going to do through your life. Peter, after he denied Jesus and after he denied him because of fear, he was later able to stand up in boldness. And the same way he denied Jesus in front of people, later he was able to stand up in boldness and exalt Jesus. Let me show you. Acts chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit falls on the people. They're speaking in tongues. They've received the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that people begin to make fun of them. Ha ha ha, they're drunk, they're drunk. And Peter, at this time, before, before his brokenness, before his falling, but his restoration, before he was restored by the Lord. Let me tell you what happens when you get restored by the Lord. You just receive a grateful heart. You just receive a grateful heart. When the Lord restores you, you don't end up more broken. Oh, I'm, I'm a nobody. No, no, no. When the Lord restores you, you say, man, God, you're so good. Thank you, Lord. And it gives you more boldness. It gives you more strength. It gives you more gratitude to the Lord. So he has this new gratitude. He has this boldness. He denied Jesus at one time, but look what he does here. But others mocking said they are filled with wine. In other words, they were mocking the Holy Spirit. But look what Peter says, 14 through 16. Instead of hiding, look what he does. But Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them. He, he didn't dwindle his voice. He lifted it up. He lifted up his voice. Men of Judea. And all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Before he was hiding his words, now he's saying, hey, pay attention to what I'm telling you. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. Before he didn't want to let nobody know he was a Christian, trusting in the Lord. Now he's telling everybody, pay attention, I'm going to tell you who I am. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. You know what he tells them? They're not drunk. This is the promise. This is a prophecy that the prophet Joel prophesied that the spirit of the Lord shall fall over people. Peter, before his failure, was arrogant, prideful, trusted in his own strength. Peter, after his error, after his failure, he was broken. He became humble. He became dependent. When he failed the Lord those three times by denying Jesus, he was sifted. Remember, what is sifting? A separation. What was separated from him? The pride, the arrogance, the self-righteousness. And all that was left was dependency on God and humbleness and trust and gratefulness. So now because of that gratefulness, that trust, that humbleness, that dependency on God, now when this situation rises up, similar to the other one, probably even more scarier because there's now there's more people, he lifts up his voice. Why? Because he's not trusting in himself anymore. He's trusting in the Lord. So because he's trusting in the Lord and he's dependent on the Lord, he's able to stand up for the Lord. The question is, why do you keep sinning so much? Because there's a separation. There's a separation going on. The true from the false. The true from the false. The true's falling and the false is being blown away. And you're just seeing that you are in a fallen state. You're seeing that you have a sinful nature. And you're seeing that you need to be humble. And you're seeing that you need to depend on the Lord every single day. And what happens if you do fail the Lord? The Bible says this. Confess your sins to him because he is faithful and just to forgive you for all your sins and wash you of all unrighteousness. So if you're failing the Lord, if you repent and confess your sins to God, he will cleanse you, he will wash you, he will strengthen you, and he will continue to use you the same way he used Peter. Peter, at this instant, when he preached, do you know how many people were saved? 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people. Peter could have thought, man, God's never going to use me. I've already sinned. I've already failed. I'm no good. No. God forgave him, restored him, and used him in a great and mighty way. And that's the blessing that I want to speak over your life. You might be feeling like, Peter, man, I've already felt the Lord. 
God's not going to use me anymore. I, I betrayed the Lord. I betrayed the gospel. No. Repent of your sins. Confess them to the Lord. And God can use you even greater than what he was already doing in your life. I pray this video was an encouragement to you. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. So do me a favor. Press the subscribe button. Turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of your screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. And check out the link in my description. It's called Channel Memberships. Consider becoming a channel member. I hope that it will be a great blessing to your life. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope that they will continue to encourage you. God bless you.